So, welcome again in my course Power Electronics Application in Power System. In last three lectures, I, I, I was discussing the basic operation of a uh, series connected power electronic based compensators that is TCSC uh, which is used in power system for various applications or various uh, reasons. So, in this particular lecture also I, I will discuss or rather I, I will finish the uh, discussion on the analysis of TCSC. Okay. So, let us proceed. So, in last lecture I stopped at this point deriving the expressions for uh, voltage across the capacitor. As you know the basic schematic diagram of this TCSC is something like this. We have a fixed capacitor, this fixed capacitor and we have a variable reactor, we, we call it a, a TCR, okay, whose uh, reactance would be uh, controlled by the firing angle control of the thyristors. Right? So, voltage across capacitor means voltage across this, this particular series unit and which is of course, uh, the voltage across this TCR unit as well. Okay. So, the expression for voltage across the capacitor we derive, uh, there are two equations when this TCR is conducting the voltage across capacitor is this, when TCR is non-conducting that is I TCR is 0, so voltage across the capacitor is that. So, this is voltage across the capacitor that expression is when TCR is conducting and this is the voltage across the capacitor that expression when TCR is non-conducting. Right? So, you can see uh, if you look at the both the equations, this equation as well as this equation, you can see that uh, these are not ideally sinusoid. Okay? So, this would be some kind of distorted sinusoid. So, therefore, some amount of harmonics would be there uh, within the expression and we will analyze this harmonic as well. So, in this particular lecture, basically I will discuss TCSC reactance. and harmonics. Okay. So, the goal of this uh, today's lecture is to uh, discuss the TCSC reactance and the harmonics. Now, what do we mean by TCSC reactance? Already I explained one of my previous lectures when I discussed this basic operating principle of TCSC. Uh, that uh, this TCSC reactance uh, is effectively Z TCSC, which is a parallel combination of this XC and XTCR. Now, it could be positive, when it is positive, then uh, it is inductive, it could be negative as well, when it is negative, it is capacitive mode of operation. So, we have two vernier control mode, which I already explained. So, for these two vernier control modes, the TCSC reactance would be in different signs or TCSC reactance will have different sign. One is uh, positive when it is operating at inductive vernier control and it is negative when it is operating at capacitive vernier control. Okay. So, these are the uh, uh, two operating modes of TCSC and we will uh, determine the expression of TCSC in particular uh, as a function of this parameter beta. As I explained, this beta is angle of advance, it is an important parameter. Uh, for TCSC analysis and this beta can be varied. Now, with the variation of the beta, what would be the impedance or what would be the expression of the impedance of the TCSC that we are trying to determine today. Now, in order to determine that as I, I, I explained, the voltage across this capacitor is non-sinusoidal. So, therefore, uh, we have to find out the fundamental component of the voltage across the capacitor. Okay. So, let us find out this. So, the fundamental component component of the voltage 
across the capacitor can be obtained as this is we, we, we can obtain for uh, from Fourier series analysis as you know. So, this is V c 1, 1 stands for the fundamental, V c stands for voltage across the capacitor. So, this is equal to 4 by pi integration of 0 to pi by 2 V c t sin omega t d omega t. Okay. Now, you know that why we uh, keep this limit 0 to pi by 2 because we have some symmetry of this uh, capacitor voltage as well. So, uh, look at this this voltage waveform. Uh, so, here basically uh, we, we restrict our uh, limit from this omega t is equal to 0 to omega t is equal to pi by 2 okay, for this two limit. Now, uh, within this two limit we have these two different expressions for V c t. As we know that uh, this uh, V c t expression when T c r is non-conducting would be something else and uh, rather than when T c r is conducting. Now, you can see that uh, here T c r will conduct uh, from the time interval 0 to beta. So, this is the angle beta. So, up to this, this T c r will conduct and then in this particular interval that is uh, beta to pi by 2 T c r will not uh, conduct. Okay. So, T c r con, uh, will be non-conducting. So, therefore, I can write, uh, I can split this uh, interval of this uh, integration into two part, one is 4 by 0, 0 to beta V c t sin omega t d of omega t. Another is 4 by pi integration beta to pi by 2 V c t V c of t that is voltage across the capacitor instantaneous voltage of course, sin omega t d omega t. Okay. Now, you understand that in this particular interval T c r is conducting, conducting. In this particular interval, uh, T c r is non-conducting. Right? So, therefore, this V c t expression whichever we will be using in this particular interval that is 0 to beta would not be uh, applicable when we use the interval beta to pi by 2. So, if I write the actual expressions for V c t for these two intervals, so it will be something like this 4 by pi 0 to beta. Now, if you go back and see what was the expression for V c t when T c r was conducting, T c r is conducting. So, this is the expression, this is the expression. So, let us copy it and uh, write over here, it will be equal to I m x c divided by I m x c divided by lambda square minus 1 multiplied with minus sin omega t minus sin omega t plus lambda cos beta divided by cos lambda beta lambda cos beta divided by cos lambda beta multiplied by sin lambda omega t multiplied by sin lambda omega t. So, this is the expression for V c t when T c r is conducting if you look at. So, this is what the expression of uh, V c t when T c r is conducting. So, therefore, we will use it and this would be multiplied with sin omega t d of omega t. Okay. So, this is one uh, part of this uh, expression. Another part would be 4 by pi integration beta to pi by 2. Now, 
Now, in this particular interval T C R is non conducting. So, therefore, the expressions for V C T would be what when uh, it was applicable for T C S T C R is non conducting that means this expression that means this expression. So, I can write this directly. So, this will be V C dash T C dash is, uh, is some uh, uh, parameter which is independent of time you can look at this expression is time independent. So, this expression is time invariant. Okay. So, therefore, this is something like a constant you can uh, find this value and put it over here directly, but this part this part is a part which is time variant at, at the sin omega t component. So, therefore, this plus I m x c sin omega t minus sin beta this is the expression uh, or I should use a different parenthesis for this because already the square parenthesis is used. So, I will use this curly bracket. So, this is the expression for this V c t when uh, T c r is non conducting right this is already we uh, determined in the last uh, lecture. So, when we put this then this has to be multiplied with sin omega t d omega t. Okay. Now, this is a very big integration and I am leaving to you all the learners to, to uh, do it uh, by yourself. In fact, in my uh, live classes uh, I, I usually tell my student to derive it. Okay. And then I will match uh, this result that I am having with them, because this is a very uh, long integration you need to put a considerable effort to solve this and therefore, we will be coming up an expression which will be also very large. Okay. Uh, do not remember this particular equation there will be no use of it you have to understand the concept underlying this equation that is all. Okay. I will never ask you to derive this expression in your uh, examination or I will uh, not set any questions regarding this uh, particular explanation which you need to remember. So, there is no need of that, but this underlying concept should be understood. Okay. Then uh, the, the this is the basic goal of this particular lecture. Okay. Now, I have uh, the solution with me I can directly write over here and I will leave it with you to match the solution with your solution. Okay. So, the solution that I have is I m multiplied by x c okay, minus x c square divided by x c minus x l like this, then 2 beta plus sin 2 beta divided by pi plus 4 x square x c minus x l multiplied by cos square beta divided by lambda square minus 1 multiplied by lambda tan lambda beta minus tan beta divided by pi. This is what the expression which you need to verify. Now, I will uh, leave it to uh, you to verify. Please verify this solution. Okay. So, I have this solution which I can show to you, but what you need to do is you need to verify it. Okay. It is a very uh, long equation. As far as this power system learners is concerned, because we do not have uh, such a very big equations having so many uh, you know components uh, so many things within this equation uh, usually in power system. So, therefore, this is relatively a very long equation you need to carefully verify it, but 
I think that you should be able to derive it even though you do not remember this, but you should be able to derive this equation whenever is required. Okay. So, this is something is the goal of this particular lecture. Now, what is this V c 1? V c 1 is the fundamental component of the voltage across the capacitor and what was our goal? Our goal is to find out the T c s c reactance. Right? Now, how can we find out this T c s c reactance? You can find out it uh, by taking the ratio of the voltage across the capacitor and this I m. I m is the current flowing through this particular line because we are interested to find out the uh, uh, this impedance of the T C S C. Now, what would be the impedance of the T C S C? Obviously, the impedance of the T C S C would be the voltage across the T C S C and current flowing through the T C S C. So, voltage across the T C S C is V C 1, current flowing is basically this I and the maximum value of it is I m. Okay. So, that is why it is this I m is the I m is representation of the current that is peak value of the current flowing through the T C S C and V C 1 is the representation of the voltage across the T C S C. Their ratio would be of course, the representation of the uh, overall impedance of the T C S C. So, therefore, the impedance or one may tell that this is also reactance because both are representing same thing because we are assuming that the T C S C is lossless. So, therefore, the impedance of T C S C is Z T C S C okay. and this is it is found out to be the ratio of this V C 1 to I m. Okay. And in if you look at this expression that we derived right now, this is uh, the left hand side we have V c 1, right hand side we have I m. So, therefore, this ratio can be easily uh, determined from that particular expression and this ratio is representation of this, uh, this uh, impedance or reactance of the T c s c. Now, if you find this and do some uh, uh, further simplification, then the expression we get of Z T C S C as a ratio of X C. Now, what is X C? X C is the reactance of the fixed capacitor. So, this expression after uh, doing some simplification is coming out to be 1 plus 2 by pi multiplied by lambda square divided by lambda square minus 1 multiplied by a bracket 2 cos square beta divided by lambda square minus 1, then 10 lambda beta minus 10 beta minus beta minus sin 2 beta by 2. Okay. Now, what is that ratio? This ratio is the, this is basically representing this is basically representing ratio of T C S C impedance to the reactance of the fixed capacitor or capacitor of T C S C. Okay. Now, you know that at this point this T C S C uh, you know schematic diagram is something like that we have a fixed capacitor in parallel to a T C R. Okay. Okay. Now, if you consider the reactance of this particular uh, fixed capacitor is X C okay. and overall impedance of this is Z T C S C. Then, the ratio of this Z T C S C to X C is found out to be this and this we obtain from this uh, previous expression from this expression after doing some sort of simplification. We, we converted this X C X L in terms of lambda and uh, wherever is possible that 
uh, we, we convert all this parameter into lambda and beta. So, therefore, this expression if you look at then you can see z t c s c to x c ratio is function of lambda beta only function of lambda and beta. Now, what is lambda if I, I hope that you can remember it appropriately this lambda already we derive in this one of this expression it is the ratio of the omega r to omega okay, where omega r is equal to 1 upon root over L c which is resonating frequency. So, it is basically a representation of that uh, ratio of the omega r to omega that means omega r is uh, what times of uh, this power frequency that is what. So, basically lambda is a constant because it is a design parameter okay, it depends upon this 1 upon L and C which are fixed. So, lambda is constant only parameter here is variable is beta. So, if we go back and see so therefore, lambda is design parameter. parameter and constant for a particular TCSC. Okay. So, therefore, this, this ratio is variable only with this beta. Now, B, what is beta? Beta is the angle of advance as, as I said this is a very important uh, concept and we will derive all this lateral parameter in terms of beta and the choice of beta is important for controlling the TCSC. Okay. So, this ratio is an important uh, parameter which can be varied or controlled with the appropriate choice of the beta depending upon the requirement. This is something one needs to understand. Now, we will be doing some case study here. What is the case study? First case study is let us consider beta is equal to 0. Now, what will happen? And second case study is let us consider beta is equal to pi by 2 because if you look back and see the waveforms that I uh, derived this possible value of this beta can be 0 to pi by 2. When beta is equal to 0 that means TCR is non-conducting. When beta is equal to pi by 2 then that means TCR is fully conducting. Okay. So, that means beta is equal to 0 means TCR is non-conducting or TCR is fully off. Okay. Now, what mode of operation it is? It is a fixed capacitor mode of operation. It is a fixed capacitor mode of operation. Because if your TCR is fully off, that means uh, this TCS is nothing but a fixed capacitor. So, overall impedance of the uh, TCS should be equal to the reactance of the fixed capacitor or impedance of the fixed capacitor. Does it happen? Let us see. Now, if we put uh, beta is equal to 0, you look at this cos beta will be equal to 1, tan lambda beta this part would be 0. So, tan beta will be also 0. So, if you, uh, 0 multiplied with this would be 0. So, therefore, uh, this would be also 0, this would be also 0. So, inside this bracket whatever term we ha will be having corresponding to beta is equal to 0 will be 0. So, that means, this ratio there T C S C by X C will be equal to 1 plus 2 divided by pi lambda square divided by lambda square minus 1 multiplied by 0 which is equal to 1. So, this gives that Z T C S C is equal to X C which is the fixed capacitor mode of operation. So, th this gives one uh, indication that this expression is correct, but you need to also verify whether it is true or not. Now, second case study is when beta is equal to pi by 2. 
Now, what do you mean by beta is equal to pi by 2? At this case, TCR is fully on, fully on. So, therefore, what mode of operation it is? If, if you look back uh, this waveform which we had drawn earlier, this is what the uh, you know uh, this TCR current for this value of beta. Now, if beta is equal to pi by 2, then this current would be somewhere like this up to this. Okay. So, I can uh, draw this uh, by some other color, let us say here, when uh, this beta, this will be equal to I T C R, this would be equal to I T C R of T corresponds to beta is equal to pi by 2, right. So, then uh, this would be equal to I T C R current. Okay. So, when it happens that means, uh, TCR is fully conducting. So, in that case there would be no harmonics of course, that is one of the advantages, but when it happens then what would be the value of this uh, ZTCSC that is what something important to us. So, this is uh, you know fixed capacitor mode and when TCR is fully conducting we have to find out what mode of operation it is. So, if we put beta is equal to pi by 2 then what we will get? you can see this part would be equal to 0 and now cos beta uh, cos pi by 2 is uh, what it is 0. So, this has to be multiplied uh, with 0 multiplied this entire uh, block. So, this would be 0 this would be 0. So, only this beta will remain. So, then uh, this this equation according to me will be equal to equal to z t c s c divided by x c is equal to or I should write it here z t c s c divided by x c is equal to 1 plus 2 by pi lambda square lambda square minus 1 and then within this bracket it will be multiplication with pi by 2. Okay. Then what we will get this pi by 2 and this would be cancelled out. So, this will be equal to 1 minus lambda square divided by lambda square minus 1. So, this is lambda square minus 1, this, this is minus 1 divided by lambda square minus 1. Okay. So, this uh, ZTCSC and XC ratio will be this. Now, what we can interpret from it? Let us consider lambda is equal to 3 that means, uh, this omega r is 3 times of the power frequency. So, then this z t c s c z t c s c to this x c ratio would be equal to minus 1 upon 3 square that is 9 minus 1. So, that is minus 1 divided by 8. Now, minus 1 by 8 is a fractional number my point around point 1 to 5 or something like that. So, therefore, uh, it is a fractional number, but negative. Now, what this negative sign uh, signify? This negative sign signify that uh, this uh, overall impedance of TCSC would be uh, minus of uh, this XC. Now, XC is a capacitive impedance. So, negative of that would be an inductive uh, mode. So, therefore, this is a uh, inductive mode of operation. Okay. This is an inductive mode of operation. Now, there would be another you know uh, value of beta which will be also uh, important to us that uh, this beta is value of this beta c which is called cut off value of this beta for which for which uh, this 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 ratio that is z t c s c to x c ratio would be infinite. Okay. That is why this resonance will happen. This is also an important you know case study that we can do. Now, uh, from this uh, we can find out at what value of this beta this ratio would be infinitely large. Okay. 
in practical sense it cannot be infinite, but it can be infinitely large uh, that means the resonance will happen which makes it uh, this isolated from the system and that means this will create a discontinuity the placement of this TCHC will cause a discontinuity at the point where it is placed in the transmission line. So, we have also uh, this, this point is interest to us. Now, in order to find this what we will do is we have to do some more derivation. So, let us do some derivation uh, to arrive at the conclusion that what could be the value of beta c to guess at least what could be the value of this beta for which this would be equal to infinite. Okay. Now, you can see this mode of operation is prohibited and uh, this we have to identify uh, before and uh, we should control or tune the parameter of TCSC such that this uh, situation or this case will never appear. Okay. So, therefore, uh, to, to find this what we can do let us do some derivations of z TCSC to x c. So, I am just rewriting this expressions once again. So, 1 plus 2 by pi lambda square divided by lambda square minus 1 multiplied by now you can see here we have two term one is lambda tan lambda beta another is tan beta. So, what we can write this is 2 cos square beta divided by lambda square minus 1 then lambda tan lambda beta minus 2 cos square beta divided by lambda square minus 1 tan beta. We did nothing, but uh, we just multiplied this multiplier, this multiplier one with this lambda tan beta another with tan beta. Okay. Now, we write this minus beta as it is and minus sin 2 beta by 2 as it is. Okay. Now, what we will do? We will carry, go ahead with this derivation a once again. So, this will be lambda square lambda square minus 1. Now, this can be written as 2 cos square beta lambda tan lambda beta divided by lambda square minus 1 minus. Now, you can see we can write this tan beta by sin beta by cos beta. So, if we uh, write it, if we just write tan beta as sin beta divided by cos beta, then this cos beta and this one cos beta in the numerator will be cancelled out. So, in the numerator we will have 2 cos beta sin beta which can be written as sin 2 beta divided by lambda square minus 1 minus beta minus sin 2 beta by 2. Okay. Now, we have 2 uh, sin 2 beta term one is this another is this. So, let us aggregate this two. So, 1 plus 2 divided by pi lambda square lambda square minus 1 2 cos square beta lambda tan lambda beta divided by lambda square minus 1 minus if I take uh, sin 2 beta common outside a bracket then here we will have 1 by lambda square minus 1 here we have 1 by 2 right then minus beta we I am keeping as it is. Now, let us write it again 2 by pi lambda square lambda square minus 1 multiplied by I will keep this as it is 2 cos square beta lambda tan lambda beta lambda square minus 1 minus the sin 2 beta I will write as it is. Now, if we just uh, uh, do this this addition 1 upon lambda square minus 1 plus 1 upon 2, 
then it will be equal to 2 plus lambda square minus 1 divided by 2 lambda square minus 1 minus beta. Okay. So, again we write 2 by pi lambda square divided by lambda square minus 1 this portion as it is 2 cos square beta lambda tan lambda beta divided by lambda square minus 1 minus sin 2 beta with the multiplication of this will be lambda square plus 1 divided by if I bring this two outside divided by lambda square minus 1 minus beta. So, this is the expression I wanted to derive. Now, look at this particular expression. Okay. Uh, here only parameter is uh, varying, uh, only variable parameter is beta. So, in this particular expression, so the only variable in this expression is beta. Apart from that, everything is constant. Lambda is a design parameter, it is constant. All other parameters uh, are constant. So, only parameter which is uh, can be varied is beta. Now, what is the range of the beta? Beta can be varied from 0 to pi by 2. Okay. Beta can be varied uh, from 0 to pi by 2. Okay. Now, as you can uh, already have seen uh, neither beta is equal to 0 or beta is equal to pi by 2, two extreme limits gives the ratio uh, ZTCSC to XC infinite or infinitely large. Then what would be the value of beta for which this would be infinity? If you look at this particular expression, you can see this uh, if we vary beta from 0 to pi by 2, this minus beta, this component will never be infinite there is no chance uh, it is a parameter. Now, sin 2 beta, uh, so sin 2 beta cannot be infinite within this range uh, 0 to pi by 2. In fact, sin 2 beta can never be infinite. So, as this cos square beta. So, who what parameter can be infinitely large so that uh, this ZTC SC to XC ratio will be infinite. So, if you look at then only this tan lambda beta is a parameter which can be infinite. Ten, ten uh, theta can be infinite. Under what condition tan theta can be infinite? You know, when theta is equal to pi by 2. Then uh, you know that uh, uh, the sin pi uh, tan theta uh, when uh, theta is equal to pi by 2 that is tan pi by 2 uh, is equal to sin pi by 2 divided by cos y pi 2. Now, sin pi by 2 is equal to 1, cos pi, pi by 2 is equal to 0. So, this can be infinite. So, therefore, uh, from in this particular expression, if this lambda beta is equal to pi by 2, then what will happen? Z T C S C by x c can be infinity. Okay. So, this is an important relation. Okay. This is an important relation and therefore, this beta c uh, that is uh, or, uh, known as this uh, cut off value of this beta which should never be appeared is equal to pi by 2 to lambda. This is an uh, you know indirect way of uh, determining this, but you can mathematically also derive this expression uh, this, this beta c is equal to pi by 2 lambda from this particular expression uh, if you want to solve. Now, what we will do next? We, we got these three important cases that uh, at beta is equal to beta c this is infinity and we find out this beta c is equal to pi by 2 lambda. Okay. So, this is what we derive. Okay. We know that what will happen beta is equal to 0. We also know that what will happen at beta is equal to pi by 2. Then what we can do is that we can plot this z uh, t c s c to x c ratio with respect to beta. Now, how would be the plot? Let us see. So, let us have this plot 
of this ratio z t c s c to x c versus this beta ok. So, one axis I will write this particular ratio that is z t c s c to x c it can be positive it can be negative as well in another axis we will uh, keep beta ok and beta can be varying from 0 to let us say pi by 2 ok and this is uh, suppose this beta is equal to beta c for which this uh, resonance will happen. Now, as we know that uh, when this uh, uh, this beta is equal to 0, then this ratio will be equal to 1. So, this is 1, let us say this is 2, this is 3, this is 4 and so on and here also this is minus 1, this is minus 2, this is minus 3, this is minus 4 and so on. Now, at uh, beta is equal to 0, this is our operating point, okay. this is what would be that uh, value of this ratio. Then what will happen if you uh, take this particular expression and plot it by using any, any uh, coding language you know either in MATLAB or any C or C++, then this plot you will see something like this, this plot will be something like this. Okay. And uh, as we know that uh, when, uh, when uh, beta is equal to pi by 2, uh, this would be negative, but uh, this value would be something close to 0. So, this plot of this side would be something like that. Okay. Okay. So, the plot of this z t c s c 2 x c, which is an important uh, you know parameter would be something like this and when beta is equal to beta c their value will be uh, infinitely large. So, that is why we keep it as a discontinuity there. So, this plot is also an important for uh, application of TCSC in particular for controlling the TCSC parameter. So, that our operation should be within this you know feasible range of this uh, characteristics. Now, the question is we have two, two plot, one is this red, another is this, which one is what mode of operation. Now, you can see uh, that uh, in this particular mode of operation, z t c s c to x c ratio is positive, that means z t c s c uh, is having same sign with x c. So, therefore, it is a capacitive vernier mode, capacitive uh, mode of operation. Okay. Whereas, in this particular mode when uh, z t c s c and x c ratio is negative that means, the sign of this impedance overall impedance of the t c s c is negative of the reactance of the fixed capacitor which is eventually an inductive uh, you know reactance. So, therefore, this would be inductive mode of operation. So, this is inductive mode of operation. Okay. So, uh, in uh, this vernier control mode of operation of T C S C either the operation should be here or here. In general it is uh, in capacitive mode, okay. but uh, this, this point has to be avoided. So, you should have a sufficient uh, you know uh, margin to avoid this, this uh, state where this, this ratio is infinite and this may cause a discontinuity in the transmission line which is not acceptable at all. Okay. So, this is something uh, I want to tell. In fact, what is actually happening over here is that with the change with the increase, increase in uh, this beta, what is actually happening is uh, this, this z t c s c or t c s c is slowly moving 
from capacitive mode of operation to inductive mode of operation or inductive vernier control mode of operation. I am just writing in short inductive mode of operation. Now, why it is actually happening if you look at this, uh, uh, this, this waveform once again which I have drawn uh, at the very beginning when I started the analysis. When beta is equal to 0 means uh, what does it mean actually and uh, this uh, TCR is non-conducting or TCR is fully off. When TCR is fully off, it is capacitive mode. Now, when TCR is slowly uh, uh, building it current like this, so slowly building it current, then what is actually happening when uh, this TCR current is 0, then the net reactance of the TCR is the voltage across TCR, which is the voltage across this capacitor that is Vc divided the current that is uh, flowing through the TCR that is ITCR. That ratio would be uh, infinitely large when it is operating uh, beta is operating near to 0. Okay? And therefore, in this particular uh, this interval when beta is very near to 0 and uh, it is operating in capacitor mode, uh, basically what is actually happening is uh, since this uh, impedance or reactance of this TCR is uh, because you can see as I show, show you that uh, X TCR is basically equal to uh, this uh, voltage that is VCT divided by I TCR T. Now, when I TCR is T is uh, close to 0, uh, then this will become very large, very large or infinitely large whatever the value of VCT might be uh, or infinitely large. Now, when you move uh, this value of the ITCR from 0 to M1 value, still it this IT XTCR is usually large. So, therefore, in this particular mode XC is lower than XTCR, this condition is getting satisfied and that is why uh, you know the capacitive of mode of operation is uh, taking place. Whereas, if we keep on this increase in the value of beta, then this X T C R which is the ratio of V C T divided by I T C R T. When I T C R T is sufficiently large, then X T C R would be lower. So, therefore, uh, this, this will have the case uh, when X C is greater than this X T C R and that is why it is operating at the inductive mode of operation. So, uh, at uh, this happens, uh, so this X T C R value is higher than higher near to beta is equal to 0, what I have shown over here and X T C R value is lower. Uh, near to beta is equal to pi by 2 which is happening over here and that that makes these two conditions satisfied which I discussed long time before when I started this discussion on TCSC and that is why it is actually happening. Now, uh, so therefore, uh, with the increase of this beta TCSC is slowly moving capacitive mode because actually this TCR reactance if you plot this TCR reactance it is getting uh, reduced. So, if this if you plot this TCR reactance X TCR of T with respect to this beta, then what we will see its value is getting reduced. Okay. So, that is what is it is actually happening okay. and this is what the reason is okay. and that is why these two mode of operation is taking place. Now, next uh, if you uh, remember I, I explain that uh, this when I uh, discuss this uh, this this uh, waveform, I said that this VCT will not be sinusoidal. TCSC of it will be only sinusoidal when TCSC operation at fixed capacitor mode. 
then the question would be how would be the characteristics of VCT or how would be the waveforms of VCT. So, that is also an important uh, to us. So, this you can eventually verify by taking an example. So, what I can show over here is that VCT waveforms for capacitive and inductive mode of operations. Okay. Now, how would we let us see? So, let us start with this uh, inductive mode of operation. So, what is actually happening in inductive mode of operation? or let us start with this uh, capacitive mode of operation. So, in capacitive mode of operation if I draw this waveform once again. So, suppose suppose this is our line current is this is our line current I t. I of t that is line current. Okay. And then this for this particular line current as you know when it is operating at uh, this, this capacitive mode of operation. So, what we know is this would be if we go back and see. suppose this is our line current and then this would be our uh, this this uh, green line is showing that this would be our this ITCRT. So, therefore, ITCRT would be something like this. ITCRT will be something like this. This is minus beta, this is beta. So, this is this would be something like this. Okay. So, therefore, uh, what would be the net uh, this current as we know if we just draw this this schematic diagram of this, uh, this is our fixed capacitor that is voltage across this is V C T and this is our this TCR unit it is drawing a current which is equal to I TCRT okay. and uh, this is basically this I of T. Okay. Now, uh, this is the difference of this I of T I of T minus this I TCRT is basically uh, representation of current flowing through the capacitor. Okay. Now, how would be the you know uh, this difference that you can see over here? If you have if you take the difference of this, then this would be something like this. Up to this it will be like this then it would be something like this and then again this would be something like this. So, this green curve is basically representation of current flowing through the capacitor. An integration of this will representation of the voltage across the capacitor which would be uh, you know that uh, there would be a phase di uh, displacement of this pi by 2, but uh, if you look back uh, I already explained this, but uh, this characteristics would be almost similar to this the current flowing through the capacitor. So, uh, it will uh, be having a phase displacement of this pi by 2. So, therefore, so therefore 
so this is pi by 2. So, therefore, this capacitor current uh, capacitor voltage will be something like this, it will be like this. Okay. Similarly, it will be like this. So, this is what would be the capacitor voltage. voltage or V c of t. Now, similarly and this will happen for capacitive mode of operation, this is for capacitive mode of T c S c operation. Now, similarly we can also draw the similar characteristics for inductive mode of operation, similar waveforms. So, suppose this is what this line current that is I of t. Okay. Now, we know that uh, we already explained at the very beginning if you can remember that uh, for uh, inductive mode of operation the direction of the line current and the direction of uh, this uh, a TCR current would be different than this capacitive mode of operation. Therefore, this current would be something like this, I TCR will be something like this, this will be I TCR or actually I should draw it in a bigger way because here now I TCR would be considerably higher magnitude okay. and here will be again this I T C R, this will be again I T C R. So, therefore, the, the, the uh, net current the difference of I T and I T C R which will be the current flowing through the capacitor would be something like this, it would be something it will be follow like this profile and then it will getting be reduced like this then it will have the same profile like this, then it will follow this again, then it will be again reduced, it will be something like this. And accordingly this, this uh, voltage across this capacitor or V c t will be something like this, it will follow, it will, there will, it, the, it will be so, so I although I have not written, but you understand this will be the expression for current flowing through through the capacitor. So, therefore, the capacitor voltage would be almost similar in nature. So, it will be something like this. Uh, or it will be something like that. So, this will be capacitor voltage. So, this will be the actual ex, uh, you know waveform for the capacitor voltage uh, which I uh, told you that I will derive. So, and this would be uh, this you know V c t waveform for inductive mode of operation, inductive mode of T c S c operation. Uh, you can see there is a difference of this uh, waveforms in all together uh, and uh, uh, in between these two different modes of operation of TCS. Now, one last thing that I will discuss in this particular lecture before I stop uh, that is the harmonics in TCSC. In TCS. So, you know that this harmonic is generated in T C S C because of the T C R operation. So, I should write the harmonics in T C S C is generated due to partial conduction. conduction of 
switches in TCR. This is very important uh, to understand that it is because of because it, uh, TCR is responsible for uh, this having harmonics in TCSC. Uh, because uh, and most importantly, if the TCR is operated at partially conducting mode, then uh, uh, this this harmonics will be generated. But we need to uh, find out this harmonics and we need to find out the mitigations of the harmonic as well. But this harmonics will be less as compared to this uh, normal operation of the TCR in sun, but uh, we need to analyze this harmonic. So, first we need to find out the fundamental TCR current which is I TCR you can make it 1 to represent it is fundamental it is equal to 4 by pi 0 to pi by 2 i t c r of t cos omega t d omega t ok. So, this is by using this Fourier series uh, expression and you know that i t c r t expression already we have drawn we have derived. Uh, this is what the expression for I T C R T. So, if I put over here, then I will come up with the expression for this fundamental T C R current and that expression also you can derive, I ask you to derive and this expression uh, of this uh, is coming out to be 2 by pi lambda square divided by lambda square minus 1 I m peak value of this line current beta plus sin 2 beta minus cos beta divided by cos lambda beta. I am just writing whatever expressions I got, you also verify it sin lambda plus 1 beta divided by lambda plus 1 plus sin lambda minus 1 beta divided by lambda minus 1. So, this expression I got, but please verify it. Okay. Similarly, this nth harmonics, nth harmonics of TCR current can be obtained as Uh, this i t c r of nth is equal to 4 by pi integration 0 to pi by 2 i t c r t cos n omega t d omega t which is uh, if you again I, I will ask you to verify it it is coming out to be 2 by pi lambda square minus lambda square divided by lambda square minus 1 i m multiplied by sin n minus 1 beta divided by n plus 1 plus sin n minus 1 beta divided by n minus 1 Okay. So, let us use some different parenthesis. Okay. This minus cos beta divided by cos lambda beta multiplied by sin n plus lambda beta divided by n plus lambda plus sin n minus lambda beta divided by n minus lambda. Okay. Where n is equal to 3, 5, 7 all our harmonics. Okay. This is this is again I will ask you to verify.
okay. So, these are the uh, different harmonics that we will have in the TCSC and we cannot do anything uh, else in that we have to uh, bear with this harmonics uh, and uh, but we should analyze it so that we can uh, uh, control this TCSC such that less harmonics would be generated in it. Okay. So, that is all about this uh, TCSC uh, analysis and its operation. So, in the next lecture I will discuss the uh, application of TCSC in power systems. So, till then thank you very much for attending this lecture. Okay. So, thank you very much for your attention, we look forward to see you in the next lecture. Thank you.